We are I. You know, effort is this funny thing that seems like that there should be an abundant amount of effort in our lives and like in just ingrained in our cells and our DNA and our fabric as a human being. Like effort seems like it, it almost has to be there. But why isn't it? Or why is it so easily trained out of people? Seems like that's what it is for human beings, whether you want to say that, you know, that's come by way of the the last generations that we've been in or the last couple. But the the scary part about this is, is how seemingly fast you can train effort out of people. Like why it's so, it's almost like it's more innate in us to be able to not have effort than it is to be able to have effort because you think effort should just, again, be baked into the fabric of who we are. You know, that there's been points in time in, you know, civilization's history, human beings' history that, you know, we've been dwindled down to very few numbers. And even if you want to look at this, you know, from Homo sapiens or Australopithecus or Neanderthals or, you know, whatever subset of human beings that you can, you can imagine. But there's always had to have been effort. Like there's, there's been hundreds of thousands of years of, you know, human beings history or, you know, like a a subset of human beings history where if there wasn't the effort required, you just died. And you see this in, you know, biological life all the time. If there's a plant that's not doing well and another plant that's doing better, the plant that's not putting in the effort will die. If you see, you know, any kind of animal that's out there that's not putting in the effort to get away from a predator or to be able to go eat food or to be able to create shelter, it will die. And that's every animal. Like if you take something as simple as a mouse, for example, that if that mouse doesn't burrow a hole, if that mouse doesn't find something to chew, if it doesn't do any of these things, it will not have, it will not survive. And this is because of the effort that it puts in every single day to be able to get away from the bird, get away from the mouse, get away, you know, and from the elements and, you know, create food to be able to create energy, to be able to create warmth, to be able to create a sustainable life. But it seems like human beings don't have this. Why, why do human beings want to have it all, but they're not willing to be able to put in the effort it takes to be able to get there? You know, and I even spin this reel back to thinking like, well, is it because human beings right now, are kind of led down this path to believe that they have to put in the most amount of effort in every single category. And thinking like, well, maybe this is true. Maybe this is where we fundamentally go wrong as human beings in 2023 by saying that you need to be able to put in the maximum amount of effort in every single possible category that you can think of. And it's like, well, there is a point in time where human beings could do that because these motherfuckers were trekking around the world. They were carrying their shelters on their backs or they were dragging their shelters. So they were creating and engineering, you know, different systems to be able to get animals to be able to drag their shelters around. They erected their shelters. They slept in their shelters. They fixed their shelters. They went and forged for food. They hunted for food. They gathered for food. They did all these things. They they created and mended clothes. Like they, they did these things. This is what human beings did, no matter what category of human beings that you want to put that into. That's what people were doing. They they were doing it all. So you know when you when you look at life in itself, yes, there was points in time, and we do know that, you know, in today's day and age, in 2023, that some of the most successful and happy human beings from an emotional intelligence, you know, in a, in a physical health are people in a very small community who depend upon each other, whether or not that this is a family subset or whether or not that this is, you know, a group of friends or whether or not this is a, just a small tight knit community. When you rely and depend upon other people to be able to do other things, it creates a better quality of life for everybody. But within inside that mentality, it finds like I find it very hard to believe that those people aren't putting in 
a, a different amount of effort in life across the board in every category. They just might have, you know, somebody who provides in a slightly different way. Because, you know, when you look at, you know, these third world countries where you have effort, it's not that it's not that one person is responsible for food. It's not that one person is responsible for money or one person is responsible for shelter. It's just where, you know, you may have had that before and you can, you know, pick on indigenous tribes and, you know, say that, well, there was, you know, typically a group of people inside of community responsible for shelter and making shelter and another one for clothes and another one for hunting and another one for security, you know, and sometimes these roles were slightly blended, but you predominantly had one role, you know, but in today's 2023, or even in third world countries, what you see is that everybody just pitches in a little bit. Instead of one person struggling to be able to provide shelter or the finances for shelter and another person providing the finances for food or, you know, like the, the opportunity for food, you just have everybody pitching in a little bit. And I feel like this is where white people really go wrong because, you know, white people's mentality is that, you know, I have to provide myself for myself 100% for you know, finances, 100% them there for food and 100% then there for shelter. And I really may only have, you know, what it takes to be able to provide, let's say 40% across the board for all those things, you know, and if you don't work hard enough, you don't put enough hours, then you won't be able to get that extra top up to be able to get to 100%. You know, but you struggle and you try to be able to do it and you beat your head against the wall where you have a lot of other cultures that say, hey, okay, well, if you have say three people that can only put in 40%. Well, now you have 120%. Now you have extra. You have extra towards the same thing. And, you know, your circumstances may not change a whole bunch, but, you know, you can tell me that, you know, if you have now extra amongst a group of people, that that gives you more opportunity. Because extra is what creates opportunity. And again, this is what the whole point behind yesterday's podcast was, is having the opportunity for education while well, education provides opportunity. You know, and if you have an excess amount of, you know, food, you're not worried about starving. If you have the security of a home and that all those bills don't rely on your shoulders, you have opportunity to be able to clear your mind and think of something else because shelter is security and both of those are synonymous and then they're both then then taken care of. You know, if you can rely upon other people to be able to help you with things like, you know, children, animals, food, shelter, security, comfort, you know, having a conversation with, you know, being there to be able to do something, anything along these lines, if there's somebody there, and this is what you see in a lot of other cultures, especially in Asian cultures, you know, and especially in, you know, Indian cultures where you like, you see these things and, you know, where there's a lot more third world countries and in, in opportunity within a country and a region for there to be poverty. Because poverty breeds this mentality because in poverty, you have to rely on people. And this comes back to what relationships used to be in the West too, is that you still had to, like a hundred years ago, you still had to rely on somebody else pretty much for survival. We weren't at that point in time yet where survival was off the table. Now with our social safety nets and the opportunities that are there for people, you don't necessarily have to have anybody in your life to rely on for survival. Like that's just the base. That's really just the base. Survival is now off the table, which fundamentally on one side is a great thing, but fundamentally on another side is actually not. I think if people have... This, this looming thing in the background being like, fuck, if I don't have effort, if effort is not there, I may die. If effort is not there, I may not have a home. If effort is not there, I may not have food. So it's, it gets back to, it's like, well, how long should you have a top up for people for before you force them to be able to rely solely on the amount of effort that they're willing to be able to put in in life? Well, who knows? That's the magic question because the thing is, it's different for everybody. But when you rob people of the opportunity to tap in the amount of effort that they have, like that's, that's, I think, where we go wrong. And I think where we also go wrong is coaching people towards you need a government social safety net instead of a community social safety net. When you have people in your life that you rely upon, you're going to have a safety net 
Absolutely. Where we lose these safety nets is when we have people packed into big urban centers where now humanity becomes faceless. When you have people in smaller rural communities, there is a lot more of a social safety net where then you have accountability to people where you will then go help them and go out of your way to be able to help them in their life because they helped you in yours. You may not have a monetary component to be able to give back to them, but if they need help moving, if they need help hanging you know, a picture, if they need help moving furniture, if they need help shoveling the snow in their driveway, if they need help doing some gardening, if they need help taking care of a child, if they need help with any one of these things, it gives you an opportunity to be able to step up. And that's where effort comes in because effort shouldn't always have to do with financial gain and financial opportunity. Yes, that this is an extremely important component, but it shouldn't be the only thing because you have skills. When people have skills, you can barter for time and effort. That's what bartering is, is an exchange of time and effort because you've created skills in your life. And that's another thing that people are lacking to is the necessary amount of skills, fundamental, actual skills that are a real part of day-to-day living. Can you, can you create things with your hands? Can you create things with your mind? These are a lot of the skills that we're lacking because we lack the ability to be able to force creativity and imagination by way of a natural organic process of just giving people an opportunity to be able to tap into that resource instead of saying that you should have creativity and you should have these skills, but robbing them of all the opportunities to be able to do so. Not all effort is made the same and are we fundamentally robbing people of the the amount of effort that they actually could be tapping into because we coach them from the day that they're born telling them that they actually don't really need to put in a whole lot of effort because that effort is just naturally there, but it's actually naturally not. You have to create the need and want for effort. Effort will not, as we have seen, effort will not just naturally and biologically come to the masses. But what does is the feeling of effort, but the metric of creation that comes from tangible effort is not there. So the question of the day is, are you putting in the necessary effort in your tangible effort? realistic effort are you putting in that effort are you doing that every single day